What's up, I'm Max with Respect Reviews, and you might ask, what am I doing in an airport in Hawaii at 4.50 a.m. in the morning? That's a very good question. So I am here in uh, Lihu in Kauai, which unfortunately doesn't have a lot of EV infrastructure. I'm actually here for a family trip, but I'm at the airport this morning because today I've dedicated it to out of spec. I'm actually gonna be doing some really interesting testing flying to Oahu. So we're gonna fly into Honolulu. I'm taking possession of a rented Mustang Mach-E from Turo, which we haven't done a lot of coverage on. And it's a really special opportunity because we get to show you one a car that we haven't seen a lot but even more interestingly an island that we haven't really covered at all in terms of EV charging infrastructure because I'm gonna be visiting every single CCS charge point on Oahu and also the one Tesla supercharger there obviously I can't charge up there but we'll see what it's like so it'll be a really interesting kind of exploration of all the rapid chargers but also um, a really cool tour of all the scenery and everything fun that there is to offer there. So join me for it. I will be back with you once I take possession of the Maki. Uh, it's so early in the morning, but I can't complain I'm in Hawaii, so I'm not gonna do that. So <laughs> I'll see you in the next clip. And welcome. I'm in Oahu at the Maki. -E. So picked it up at the airport. Super nice. Um, had some interesting navigation issues getting out of the airport. Uh, almost ended up in the Pearl Harbor military base. So I don't think I can show footage of that. But uh, I navigated successfully to the first charger in the stop. Now the state of the charge of the car right now is 96%. So really don't want to hog the charger and use it. But I'll show you guys it because you know we got to figure out what these chargers look like. So the vast majority, I think all the chargers on this island are Hawaiian Electric operated. Uh, so just by the state it seems like. Uh, and a partnership is Shell Recharge. And they're using um, Etha Sec, Efekek hardware, I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, that's their logo. And uh, it looks like they do uh, contactless payments at least with their card. So I had the Shell Recharge app installed. We're gonna use that. Most of these units don't seem to be that fast. What is this one? So five to 50 kilowatt range. Um, they do say it's 50 to 500 volts, but it looks like this is not particularly high speed charging hardware. However, maybe that's not a huge deal because it is Hawaii and, uh, you know, short distances overall. Uh, so I've got the car actually stopped, but luckily enough, the DRLs are on. Maybe it's an accessory mode. So we'll just take a peek at it. This is the Mach-E. It's a really, really cool vehicle, honestly. I really like how, well, one, the yellow color, um, aerodynamic design, uh, the door handles are, you know, love them or hate them. I don't mind them. Electronic release here. You press that like so. Uh, I don't think it's too bad. In terms of the center console experience, we have Ford Sync 4A. I'll get more into this later, but basically this is the operating system the car runs. It's fine. It has Apple CarPlay, which is what I care about. Uh, you get a nice kind of heads up display there, which works really well. Uh, in terms of backseat space, seems fine. Not that I'll be using that on this trip, uh, but yeah, overall a really practical car. Just going to take a quick look at trunk space here in this parking lot. Why not? So I actually have never opened, looks like there's a release button here. Yep. Okay. And it's a power. Oh uh, no, it's just air springs. Okay. So that's our trunk and uh, pretty nice. Lots of space. Of course, 60, 40 fold down rear seats. So very practical. Mach-E. I like it so far. Driving it impressions overall. I'll talk a little more in the car. I'm going to set up the GoPro, but I like that it's, um, I like the way the one pedal approach works. I like the regen. I like the handling. Uh, I haven't really tested it. Uh, mind the noise over there. It's Hawaii, there's nature. Um, but yeah, I haven't really tested it, but this also does have, uh, I believe, Blue Cruise. It seems to have the hardware built in. Uh, so that's the Ford self-driving stuff. So maybe we'll give that a shot on the highway. But I'm gonna drive on H1. My plan is actually to go north on the island because we have to get the state of charge on this guy down a lot. It's a 96%. I don't wanna be testing chargers uh, with that. So maybe I'll check out the Tesla supercharger first that's around here, uh, Pearl City, who knows? And then we'll go north on the island and hopefully have a lower state of charge to test at. Okay, we are at the only supercharger in Oahu. So obviously can't use this CCS vehicle, but we have to add it to our stop, so figured I'd check it out. So um, I 
glad I went here now or in the morning because it read reviews and because this is Oahu's only supercharger, apparently this gets super busy. So this is an underground kind of parking structure. Um, so nice on that end. These look like pretty new units. Uh, we have a Model S charging over there uh, and then a Model 3 just leaving. Uh, so yeah, looks like these are fairly recent units. I don't know my Tesla hardware too well, so I don't know if these are like V3, V4, what they are, 500 volt, uh, 350 amp. Uh, so yeah, fairly recent hardware. Seems like it works well. I mean, it is Tesla superchargers. So um, that's that. Uh, that is probably the fastest charging you can get on the island only if you have a Tesla. Now, the nice news is you don't have to depend on this now because Tesla has that OEM CCS adapter. So you could use that and use the rest of the chargers that we'll explore in this island. Or of course, J1772 level two charge at home. I'm sure that's what many Hawaiian EV owners do. But already this is getting busy. Lots of Tesla's pulling in, super interesting to see. Here are him and I, Maki, a uh, little bit of a pariah here. So I'm gonna leave before I get harassed by Tesla owners. I'm just kidding. They seem like very nice people. But um, yeah, super interesting to see that. Now we're gonna check out all the CCS points on the rest of the trip, but had to knock this one off the bucket list. I'd like to thank Max Speeding Rods for sponsoring this video. Guys, Max Speeding Rods is a super cool company that's been involved in combustion car tuning for years and years. And it's always pretty awesome to see, you know, sort of the old school combustion car enthusiasts and upgrade modification people get involved in electric vehicles. And they've actually just launched their own level two charger. This is the Max Speeding Rods uh, 40 amp level two charger right here. Totally compatible with every electric car, including Tesla. Actually so much so it's optimized for Tesla. It actually comes with a J1772 to Tesla adapter. So what I'm going to do is show you just how easy it is, of course, to charge uh, your Tesla at home or another electric car. You just plug it in. And the way we have it configured right now, which is super cool, is actually with an RFID. Now, of course, this comes with an app. You can turn it on and off, but it comes with these RFIDs for station activation. And all I do is actually just tap it right there and it will initiate the charging session right away. And so the app is easy to use and very informative. You can schedule your charging and set the amperage limits. All is completely remote controlled from your phone and you even get a notification once your charging has completed. The charger's UL listed and in compliance with US and Canadian standards. Energy Star certified for efficiency as well. Eligible for the federal tax credit depending on where you live. Super cool if you mount this on the outside of your house or a building, you can you know, have controlled access to your charging. One thing I really like about this unit in particular is actually the cable run to the car. It's 24 feet in length, and I think it's gonna be really nice for cold environments especially. Of course, the whole unit's waterproof, dustproof, everything like that. But we've tested a few of these chargers over the years, and they've, some of them have great cables, some really bad ones that are plasticky. This is a really nice, malleable, rubbery cable, very high quality feeling and I'm very pleased with that. The other thing that I actually like is you can either have this hardwired or into a NEMA 1450. We've actually gone for the NEMA 1450 version here in Colton's shop at Clear Detailing, uh, subscribe to Outspec Detailing. But um, what's really cool about this is if you have a NEMA 1450, I think it's super beneficial to put in a uh, dedicated wall box plugging into here. The reason is, uh, for example, a lot of Tesla owners or other vehicle owners like our e-tron has this, they come with a NEMA 1450 cable included with the vehicle. Uh, Tesla's you can buy now online. But what's annoying is every time you get home, you don't want to have to open the front trunk, grab the cable out, and then run the length over. So what happens is, at least in my case, is I end up leaving the cable at home and then driving around with no backup power supply in the vehicle. What this allows me to do is utilize the NEMA 1450 connection, which is great, um, and keep the cable in the vehicle when I'm out and about if I need mobile charging. So I think it's a huge benefit. The other really nice thing about this unit is it's pretty rare to find NEMA 1450 capable chargers that charge at 40 amps. A lot of them will only do 32 amps, specifically the mobile ones. Uh, they're very rare to find a 50 amp or excuse me, a 40 amp capable unit on a 50 amp circuit. And so I really like that we're maxing out the, the uh, outlet right here to code. So this Tesla Model 3 is actually charging at nine kilowatts or so. And again, we are at business voltage, 208 volts at Colton's shop. So at home at 240 volt, it would even do a little bit more than that. 
So yeah, very pleased with the uh, charging ability here. Love the RFID access, love the cold weather ability, love the price point. Of course, there'll be a link in the description below if you guys are curious about buying it. And uh, huge thanks to Max Speeding Rods for sponsoring this video. Love to see the combustion car tuners get into the EV space. Looking forward to more products from these guys coming soon. Thanks so much for watching this integration. Let's get back to the main video now. Something I don't think we talk about enough in the electric vehicles is the built-in navigation experience. Of course, you can use Android Auto, you can use Apple CarPlay, and Google Maps and Apple Maps both have built-in electric vehicle charging routing, but it's not amazing uh, from what I've heard from users. So the question is, how good is the built-in stock software? Tesla, in my opinion, <laughs> is the gold standard of that, but some other automakers do it pretty well. Now this is Ford Sync 4A, and this is their, their navigation system. So when I have chargers in here, the nice thing I like about Ford Sync is it tiers them very easily. So you can see like, right, your basic charging, that's level two, up to 22 kilowatts, plenty of those around here, even here in a Oahu, pretty developed. Now we get up to fast charging. They define that as up to 100 kilowatts. That's going to be honestly all the charges on our trip today. Looks like this island doesn't have any like particularly fast, you know, 350 kilowatt chargers. Maybe there's not a lot of Ionic 5s here yet. That's fine. Now these are the really fast chargers that can max out what the Mach-E can do and go further, like with cars like Ionic 5 or Porsche Taycan that could do 800 volt. Um, None of those are showing up, so it looks like we don't have anything over 100 kilowatts. But super cool that Ford Sync just lets you kind of filter that way. I do like that a lot. Now, I also want to comment this spec of car, right? High range Mach-E, just a rear wheel drive motor, uh, not the GT trim, so kind of the uh, lower horsepower, still plenty fast. It's an electric vehicle uh, trim, gets a lot of range. And we're at a high state of charge, so I really want to bump that down before I start charging. So I also need a coffee. Like, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm starting to drag a little bit. Uh, uh, so I am going to, um, just for my sake, get a coffee, get to the north side of the island. We're going to run that state of charge down. And then hopefully once the state of charge is run down, we can really start knocking out these chargers uh, and still beat that afternoon traffic. But man, I need coffee. So I'm going to get to that. Okay, so driving the rear wheel drive Mach-E, I am really honestly uh, impressed by the power. It, it's not hard. I don't drive electric vehicles too often because I don't daily one. I'm not Kyle, I don't have a Plaid. So of course this is not fast when you're accelerating from 60, but just that one single rear motor does a lot of work and it does a lot in the name of efficiency with like a 340 mile uh, EPA range rating that I think according to reviews, most people seem to actually get, and I believe it. I'm having a tough time draining this car. Um, Hawaii's roads are very, very forgiving. I mean, they're so smooth and nice, so can't comment too much on ride comfort, but it's been fine here. Uh, I don't think this is a very particularly sporty or nimble handling vehicle, especially for something that's called a Mustang. Uh, but, you know, it's a crossover, and I think it looks nice. I'll get some more exterior shots. I really love how this looks. Driving it is comfortable enough and fun, and the technology, the Blue Cruise, the um, uh, adaptive driving systems work well. The CarPlay integration in this car is actually excellent. It will like have your turn prompts from Apple Maps directed into the stock, um, like into the uh, display, uh, what it, the instrument cluster, yes, into the, that's the word for it. Uh, it'll display it in the instrument cluster, which is super nice. Um, so yeah, can't complain in, you know, Oahu, just drove out of Honolulu with this Maki, and now I'm getting to the beautiful part of the island and uh, just so cool. So I'm gonna have more fun dreading the back battery, getting it to a little bit of a lower state of charge, and then we'll do a little more, more testing on CCS, and also talk about Chad Mill for all you Chad Mill folks, because that does exist here as well. All fueled up, got a macchiato, beautiful, just, you know, double espresso shot with foam, what more do you need? The world's largest banana bread, so I am properly fueled, but we gotta get the car, we actually don't have to get it charged, it's like 85% state of charge, but I'm near a fast charger, uh, near a CCS point, so we're gonna see what that looks like, and also, We'll take a look at the chat mo plug for all you Leaf owners and Mitsubishi iMeave enthusiasts. So I'll be right back with you there. You join me in Haleiwa, Hawaii. I'm just off their big road here on a 50 kilowatt Hawaiian electric charger powered by FSEG hardware using CCS. Nice thing on this island is all of these chargers, this is the big network they have, are either Chadmo or CCS. So, Maki is charging, stupid high state of charge. I apologize, I'm not gonna be here long. I'm just proving this works at this charger. Um, 
Obviously, we're not drawing a lot of kilowatts at the moment. We've only put like, I think, one and a half kilowatt hours into the battery. Uh, this is a 98.8 kilowatt hour gross battery, uh, and we really don't need this charge. So I'm gonna get off this charger soon, but proof of concept, it does work. So that's my first rate your charge update in Hawaii. Pretty cool. I really like on Mach-E how you have this like charge indicator here. So by the CCS unlocker, you actually have basically uh, the indicator of how much you're charged. So I'm at four fifths because I'm over 80% state of charge. Uh, and is it gonna unlock it? Yes, it is. CCS, always gonna love these cables. Um, anyhow, one more note on this hardware. Activation for the station was really easy. Um, I just use the Shell Recharge app, but I think you can also use um, the FSEC app or something. Uh, and in terms of kilowatt hour pricing, it's 54 cents a kilowatt hour. Um, that's because it's off peak time. It can actually get more expensive on peak. Midday when it's really cheap, uh, looks like it's actually down to 49 cents a kilowatt hour. So it's Hawaii, electricity is more expensive, but so is gas, so is everything. So that makes sense. Okay, super disappointing news at this stop. Super cool location. This is actually a little bit uh, south of where I was before. In, uh, this is the Dole Plantation on Oahu. So if you're touring, you know, the Fruits and Vegetables Company, you can do that right there. I think they're mainly fruit, actually, not as many vegetables. Anyhow, tried to plug in the CCS guy here. Hardware is all fine. Same 50 kilowatt unit, but it's not shell recharged. It's OpConnect, which is their other system. And most of these chargers support both platforms, but this one is only OpConnect. I tried to make an Op account, like, for several times, but their email verification wasn't working. I'm going to include some screenshots of the app in the YouTube video so you can see what I'm talking about because their system is a mess. That app looks like it was made in the 2000s. No one seems to have updated it. Shell Recharge works much better. I just used that at the last stop. But here is sadly OpConnect and I just cannot get that system to work. So not a big deal because I don't really need to charge. Super high state of charge. I don't want to clog this charger. So we'll just move on to the next one. of why electric's so appealing in Hawaii. Look at that, $4.99 uh, uh, for standard gasoline here. $4.99 a gallon, uh, and that's for standard. If you need premium, like most modern turbocharged engines do, you're paying a lot for gas. So 54 cents a kilowatt hour, uh, I believe it's cheaper, 49 cents a kilowatt hour off peak. It's not so bad in comparison, <laughs> assuming of course that charging software works. So we're currently on our way to that next stop on Kamehameha Highway. Good news after that bad last stop. By the way, I did check that in on plug share as a fail to charge. Um, this stop in Mililani here in the town center, shopping center right here, um, is working well. It's shell recharged as well. Same hardware as everything else on the island. Uh, this seems like one of the newer units. I actually talked to a local lady here who was just charging her Nissan Leaf. She was super nice. She actually let me know that at least last week she came here and this stall was working. So she recommended using it because she was leaving. But this one, which I initially pulled into, actually wasn't working. So I don't know if it's working now. Maybe I'll test it uh, since I'm not really charging here. So I just want to see the current here. Apologies for the noise every time I film. The loudest trucks in the world come. Kyle knows the struggle. So, of course, shows your cars take a charge, power being delivered. So we're drawing 32 kilowatts, you know, perfectly fine for a taper, very high state of charge. Um, so I'm going to stop wasting uh, this charge and test to see if this unit works to see if um, what that lady said was right. I'm sure, I believe her last week it wasn't working. Let's see if it's been fixed since then. Uh, but this one we know works pretty well. Okay, this is super interesting. I am by basically a network of car dealers, more kind of downtown Honolulu, but um, we found our first charge point. So there's plenty of course charge point level two outlets on the island, but this is the first DC charge point I have seen. So they do exist on Hawaii, super interesting to see. I've never seen the station design either. I'm sure Kyle has, or maybe you've seen it in other videos, but uh, it's kind of interesting how this cable will move that part so you can get more um, you know, cable length to reach your car. But yeah, we're charging, uh, super easy activation. I have my charge point card in Apple Wallet, so I was able to just contactless tap it with my watch uh, and we are charging. So 
uh, looks like we're getting uh, 49 cents a kilowatt hour billing, which seems to be the standard island rate for off-peak hours because it's the middle of a weekday. So super cool. By the way, this is a Genesis dealership. So maybe they installed this because they're expecting all those GV60s, GV70 electrified, etc., to be using stuff like this at some point. But super cool that they have charge point. Plenty of level two as well. But we always love to see DC fast charging. Uh, someone else pulling in a Leaf owner. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to unplug because I don't need any more of the state of charge. But yeah, I rate this um, 8 out of 10. All right, I'm at the Wapio Shopping Center, and it looks like there's actually a Leaf owner who's using the charging right now, second gen Leaf, pretty cool. So I won't bother them. They probably need the charge more than I do, but I, you know, it works, can confirm. That looks like a Shell recharge station with Hawaiian Electric, so love to see that. Um, we've confirmed those work before on this trip. More notes on the Mach-E. I just really, really do like the headlights and overall design of this car. Of course, on the Route 1 with the 18-inch wheels. Not a huge fan of those, but what can you do? Anyhow, the clouds are clearing up, so it's getting sunny again here. Uh, and we're just going to keep going south, keep going down the spine, covering the high-traffic chargers. Uh, but yeah, just loving the look of this Mach-E. Oh, man. Hey everyone, I'm in Times Square Shopping Center, which is in Pearl City, kind of a dense urban area of Oahu. I'm charging, you can see my status here. Uh, so we're at another shell recharge here at this place. There's one stall. And uh, these stalls overall, my impressions have been pretty positive. Now they're not super high tech. They're not 350 kilowatt, sorry about that vehicle horn um they're not you know particularly uh fast but they work they're reliable as you can see you know we're getting current into our car and um they're single use so a leaf was just using this even though there is a chat mode a ccs port unlike the charge point we just came to where they have two plugs and sometimes some of those ports can actually split across two different cars and uh, basically have the current uh you can't do that here which i think is fine it's 50 kilowatts so you'd only you be getting 25 kilowatts each at that point you might as well just level two charge either in public or at home uh, so i think that's perfectly fine they just need to build more of these stalls i think i haven't seen them get too busy yet but i imagine as more people get more and more evs especially more ccs cars i think i can see these getting pretty busy but pretty overall i think positive uh charging impressions <laughs> an actual Mustang pulled up cool anyhow I'm charging uh, one of the w issues that I do have with these go EV units is sometimes they take a bit to connect now it's finally connecting I had to actually unplug and replug the CCS cable twice uh, and restart from the app so I've never had an outright failure from initiating the system every charger I've actually tried has worked aside from the one that said it was offline which obviously I didn't try but uh, this charging session is working now uh, and we are pumping the kilowatts in. I don't like that. I don't know if it's transformer noise or what that whine is, the coils in the machine. Uh, I hope you can't hear that too loudly on the mic, but that's going on. But anyhow, I'm in Kapolei. Um, charging's working well, as it has at every shelf recharge that we've been to. So activation, sometimes it's a little finicky, but when it works, it works. And uh, now that I'm started, that's cool. So don't really need to charge here long. I've got places to be. So. We're gonna go onwards north and hopefully to a more scenic area where maybe I can get the drone out and show some more scenery. You join me outside of Ruby Tuesday, the new sponsor of Out of Spec Studios. I'm, no, I'm just kidding. I'm here at the Ruby Tuesday charger, also in Capillet, but there's another Capillet charger, also a shell recharge, uh, just in this other shopping center, I forget the name of. But the point is, if you're in Capillet uh, on, on Oahu, you've got multiple charge stalls to choose from. So this one works just like the other one. Now, my one issue with this spot is if you look at where this is placed, um, really leaves a lot of no, almost no cable flex room. So you have to obviously park it perfectly. But even if you do in a car like the Mach-E, I mean, I guess I could park a little bit closer to the car, but still this cable is basically stretched as far as it can go. I wish they put this um, curb plant or whatever you call it a little far further forward. Also won't have my car sticking out as much into traffic. Maybe you're meant to go sideways into it. I don't know, but... It's a little bit frustrating for cars with charge points placed here.
Well, 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 I was hoping we could escape Op Connect, but sadly, no. Now here we are in arguably the most beautiful charger, one of the most beautiful public chargers in America. The Definitely the prettiest I've come across on my trip so far. Beautiful view here of where I am uh, by the ocean on the west side of the island. Unfortunately, the charger is not so pretty. So it is the similar hardware, actually. It looks a little bit older, but I think it's the same uh, vendor, but it's OpConnect. So it is FSEC, and there is actually, I've learned, a petition, apparently, where people don't like the FSEC chargers, which is weird, because the ones that I've used on Shell Recharge have been great. So the hardware seems fine, but maybe what people are referring to is the software, because OpConnect's charging layer, just to me, it seems terrible, because I can't use it. I, I Their account system sucks. I tried to make an account multiple times, but I'm going to stop complaining. I'm going to get a cool thumbnail here, fly the drone. I mean, this is such a scenic place. Maki looks beautiful. Can't be mad whatever we don't care about the state of charge cars get plenty of range so yeah that's sad op connect uh do better but uh, other than that good times was YNA on uh, the west side of the island. Now we're gonna cross the east side to um, Kaluuya, I think. Uh, anyhow, the east coast of the island presents hopefully some more views. We're gonna get them more in the later afternoon. It's 12.55 right now, but we have to get across the whole island. Traffic isn't too bad right now. Uh, got some awesome drone footage. There were some ambulances going by, so I hope everything's all right. Seems like there was some serious swim emergency. Um, yeah, swimming in Hawaii is dangerous. I really wanna do it, but uh, just uh, be careful. Go in lifeguarded areas. Is. Anyhow, we're on our way to the east side of the island. Hope everything's okay. I'll tag along some more of that gorgeous Hawaiian footage. Right, we're just driving along at H1 and there's a Lambo. Is that, I don't know my Lambo as well. Is that an Aventador? I don't know, it's probably something in the V10. Maybe it has a V6 turbo, I don't know. And I don't know what Lambo does now. I don't really follow the combustion cars too closely, but that's kind of cool. Some car spotting on the highway. Oof, looking nice and mean. Man, it's so cool to see cars like this. I mean, like, I don't know, if you grew up, you're like, you know, if you're in the East Coast Corridor, I grew up there, you see cars like that a lot. But in Colorado, you know, we see our Tacomas, our Forerunners, of course, our Rivians nowadays, but we don't see too many cars that ride this well. And I love seeing that, so really cool. Now, now let's pass them with some electric torque. There's nothing like having some blue cruise, the mountain roads. Oh, I love blue cruise now. We get that driver monitoring system, so I don't have to stare at that, but it's hands-free. Don't need my hands on the wheel. This road's mapped. It's just following it so beautifully. Adaptive cruise is working well. I really, really like this system. Only downside is it doesn't seem to make automatic lane changes. I have to make the lane change manually. Then once I'm in the new lane, the blue cruise will resume. But that's super cool. I like it. Well, how unfortunate we are at Ahulimanu, uh, Ahulimanu, I think. I, I'm sorry, I suck at pronunciation. But the point is we're here on the east side of the islands. Beautiful, but uh, up connect to the rescue as usual. So this station just does not work. I already reported it on PlugShare, but uh, they've actually marked it out helpful, helpfully with this red tape. Uh, and yeah, I'm guessing it just doesn't work. I'm not even gonna try because the terminal is not on. It says it was on on PlugShare, but I reported that. Um, I would check OpConnect's network, but of course can't use OpConnect because their app and their software sucks anyways. So shame that this is down. This seems like a really cool, beautiful place, but there's a charger a little bit, a few miles south. So I'm gonna go get some more coffee, go to the bathroom because it's been a while since I've done that. 
But uh, yeah, that's the one of the first examples of actually broken hardware we've seen. Everything else, for the most part, has been uh, software. There's been one other offline charger, but that's been the first one we've seen with, you know, the red tape decks over it. Hopefully n not uh, many more like that. I'm not a big trunk user, but I know a lot of you guys are, so I figured I'd show the Maki trunk and what that is. I'm sorry, front trunk and what that is like. So, boom, let's open that. Uh, weird that it's not on the key fob, but anyhow, when I open it up, yeah, gas struts, keeping it open. Good to see, you know, I hope, is there an EV with a prop rod front? I hope there isn't. Anyhow, this is not one of them. So we've got, you know, some space, more than the EGMP vehicles, but I would say a lot less than obviously Ford's other car, the F-150 Lightning, and uh, their other electric vehicle, I should say, that's a truck, and uh, less than maybe the Tesla stuff, or maybe it's on par where the current Tesla is. But anyhow, fairly deep, just not a ton of space inside, but you could absolutely store level two charging cables, carry on bags, things like that. And of course you have your emergency release button in case someone tries to squash you in here. So you'll be safe. stop and go traffic is pretty rough. Now I'm uh, just kind of in here. It's 218 on my way to Kailua, which is the next charger. And I'm glad we knocked out a lot of the chargers earlier in the day, because I think getting just getting back to Honolulu, like to the airport zone, is going to be a mess. But we got like three and a half hours. So I'm just going to weather it and uh, we'll get some fun charging in along the way. Okay, something I just want to point about Ford Sync 4A that I don't like. So functionality-wise, I like Ford Sync. Uh, it does all the things decently. It's got, you know, the Alexa Assistant. But, like, you press this and stuff is just so unresponsive. Like, that animation speed. Ooh. It's just, oh, it's a little overdone. Hopefully when they move to an Android-based system, this is a lot more responsive. Because that's, like, worse than a 2010 iPad. All right, you joined me in Kailua, and I am charging the Maki -E here on a shell recharge. FSX station's working really well. Interesting thing, I found a Tesla Model 3 here right as I pulled in. He was using that Chadmo adapter, so limited to 125 um, amps, I believe, but not an issue because he was drawing near the max 50 kilowatts that these stations can output. So generally, I'll just repeat this again and again. These stations are slow. They're not state of the art but this hardware honestly when it's managed by a decent platform like shell um it's not bad like it, it seems very reliable i wish it was faster but it's hawaii short distances you don't need to charge that much man you can really hear the cooler isn't that going but yeah we're uh charging up and it's going pretty smoothly so that's nice to see uh now that parking spot's tight it's a good thing i'm a little bit skinny so i can get in there but yeah that is uh <laughs> kailua's uh charging stop works well I give it a high rating, and I will see you with the next charger. Uh, finally seen a BMW i3, and I'm so happy. Such a cool little car, a uh, great city car, and honestly, in my opinion, great island car, because I think that has DC fast charging up to 50 kilowatts, perfect for the, all the specs of uh, charging hardware here. And it's just cool to see something that's, you know, nothing against Nissan Leafs or any Teslas, but you see those everywhere. So first interesting kind of quirky EV I've seen on the island really cool. Wonder if I'll see a mini SE. I've seen a lot of gas minis, but none of the SEs. But uh, yeah, it's a BMW i3. Okay, I'm in East Honolulu. Now, I already know, looking at PlugShare, this is an OpConnect charger, so I'm probably not going to be able to use it, but that's no big deal. It actually seems like there's a Volkswagen ID4 who pulled up next to here, uh, so looks like he's charging. Uh, so he's all set up, so that's cool. But yeah, that is basically one of the last to go. We've got like three more before back to the airport, so that one seems to work. I'll ask him how it's going, but um, yeah, East Honolulu, decent but it's OpConnect, so I'm not a fan.
Okay, it must be off the network because I checked the Shell Recharge app and it wasn't showing anywhere near there. I tried entering the station ID, no luck either. So looks like this stall is just off the network for whatever reason. They have the Chad mode of service and I guess CCS won't work either because the whole stall is unfortunately unnetworked. So I don't know what the issue is with that. Uh, that's the first time I've really seen an issue like that with a Shell station. Uh, so unfortunate, but we've got another one in Honolulu, at least one, maybe two more. So let's get to those. is actually parked all the way over there because I couldn't get a parking spot. A RAV4 Prime actually beat me to it, so did a Model 3. Cool to see a RAV4 Prime. That's the first one I've seen in the wild. Um, so they say this is CCS, but this appears to be actually just J1772, if you can look at this. So according to the plug share app, Volta is CCS because I filtered by that. But sadly, that's not the case here. Now, in this department store area, there may be another CCS charger, but honestly, the traffic's getting pretty crazy. This is what I could find. They claimed Volta was CCS. Uh, I think Volta does make CCS stalls and units. This isn't it, but still super cool. You know, you're at the mall, you get free charging. Uh, so nice kind of benefit, you know, gets you to shop and spend more money. So cool on that. Um, need to see, and also just need to see a RAV4 Prime in person in terms of uh, interesting, you know, plug-in hybrid and EV sighting. So, yep, J1772 indeed. Well, well, that has been my day with the Mach-E. Super nice car, very impressed with it. By the way, just got on some highway speeds and I know this car, people always get a reputation for having that turtle mode where you have five seconds of full throttle and it limps. Honestly, driving at sane, normal person speeds, even in the left lane, even passing lots of people, I wasn't really able to get it in the turtle mode. I'm sure if you tracked it, this wouldn't be the car to get, but it's not even the GT version. So I think it's plenty fast enough, plenty quick enough, handles fine for a little crossover, you know, SUV style thing. And as a vehicle, I love this paint color. I think it's just so good um, overall styling wise. And the cues, I think are really cool. Mine the really, really loud Camaro. But um, anyhow, so, that was a fun trip. Chargers for the beginning of the day worked well. As we get later in the day, we seem to find all of the issues. Uh, but still, honestly, less bad than Electrify America, at least on the Shell Recharge end of things. Because on their app, usually whenever something was wrong, their app either would not show the charger online or would show it you know, being busy, not available. Uh, whereas with Electrify America, we've seen sometimes it misreports that. PlugShare would also misreport, but that's because PlugShare doesn't really have real-time information. It's depending on other things. So that's why we've done Rate Your Charge, and I've submitted all my charging stops to Rate Your Charge. It's been a fun thing to do today. A um, little bit of extra work, but I think worth it to kind of give people a real-time feed. This, I hope, has been the most comprehensive all day kind of audit of charging in Oahu. It's been super fun and what a car to do it in. Really honestly, big fan of the Maki. -E. Uh, this would, you know, if I, you know, have a family or something, like I needed an SUV, this would probably be one of my picks over something like a Model Y just for the styling alone. And on an island like Oahu, you only have one supercharger. So you're gonna be depending on your Chadmo or your new Tesla CCS adapter to charge anywhere else. Whereas if you have a native CCS car, well, like this Mach-E, you can charge everywhere. And yes, they're 50 kilowatt stations, but we learned today that we could get around the island just fine, never had any range anxiety, particularly with the California Route 1 trim of this car, which gets like three 340 miles so no worries about range anxiety just a fun kind of chill day it's sunset here uh, in Honolulu so really pretty I am in a parking garage so that part's not so pretty but I am going to there's the Camaro coming back around um, I'm going to turn in this Turo and uh, get on my flight back home to uh, well not home but you know back on my trip back to Kauai but super fun time in Oahu 
good time with the Mach-E, mixed experience charging, but overall positive, especially for a network we're not used to, in some ways better than Electrify America, I'll bite slow speeds, you know, different kind of infrastructure. It is an island after all. So that has been Out of Spec Reviews. Thank you guys so much for watching this fun motoring, uh, so, sorry, this has been Out of Spec Motoring. Thank you for watching this adventure. It's been fun and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.